After 71 days on the Klondike Trail, they have almost reached the rainbow's end. It's our last day on the water. Tomorrow, we hit Dawson, so we're only about 15 kilometers or so from Dawson right now. Just maybe arrive tomorrow, and it's oh, such a good, good feeling. I don't know about the other guys, but I mean, I am here for the gold. Like, that is it, 100% in a nutshell. And I'm going to do everything in my power to get as much gold as fast as I can. Oh, yeah, one, one other thing I'd like to mention, that uh, there's one person that's really been starting to piss me off, and I'd just like to show you uh, his face up close, personal. We're going to Dawson. we got 15 more minutes to get there. I can hardly wait. I'm so excited. I'm nervous, and I can hardly wait to have a bath and a full belly and a beer and a beer and a beer and a bath and a beer. For over two months, they have climbed mountains, crossed lakes, and lived off the land. It has taken 1,000 miles and 105 years, but they can finally call themselves Stampeders. Dawson Bound, Dawson Bound. Everybody knows I'm Dawson Bound. Looking for gold has never been found. Everybody knows I'm Dawson Bound. Wind and rain, wind and rain. Won't send me back to where I came. I ain't ever gonna turn around Everybody knows I'm Dawson Bound Dawson Bound, Dawson Bound Everybody knows I'm Dawson Bound Looking for gold that's never been found Everybody knows I'm Dawson Bound Everybody knows I'm Dawson Bound. Everybody knows I'm Dawson Bound. Looks good. That's it, eh? That's Dawson? Yeah. All right. What do you think they thought, Andrea, 105 years ago when they saw Dawson? I think they thought, Wee-hoo! At the height of the gold rush, Dawson City was almost as big as Seattle. Its streets teemed with gold-hungry Southerners known as Stampeders. One of those men was journalist Tappan Adney. Fifty men go by, and no one knows his neighbor. If you see a man twice, you call him partner. But it is a lie, as is the word friend. This team of four men and one woman have accomplished what no one has done since Tappanadney's time. Cross the Great Gold Rush Trail from Dyee to Dawson as period-appropriate Klondike Stampeders. They began as a group of ordinary citizens. When it was over, they would never be the same. I almost want to cry. I just, I do, already. And it's only day two and we haven't even got to the, the scary parts yet a homemaker, and a photographer, a part-time miner, a folk singer, and a young man who lived in a van. On the great mountains of the Chilkoot, they carried thousands of pounds of supplies, plus a boat up the slopes of loose rock, reaching the summit with relief and joy. I, I didn't really want to say to everybody, I'm cold, I'm cold, I'm cold, because I don't want that. Uh, all the guys think that I'm just a kid. This will be uh, one of those days that, that I remember about the trip, like forever and ever. By midsummer, food was low, and they learned to live off the land. The team faced many dangers on the journey north, but their biggest struggle was within the group. The men were not happy when Andrea put them on short rations, leaving her to hike long portions of the trail without her teammates. Do you see them here? <laughs> it's midnight and they're not here. Finally, 
on the outskirts of Dawson City at a place called Split Up Island, Andrea decided to go her own way. I don't really have any plans to go out to the gold field with these guys. I feel like I can do better for myself if I get a job in town. Oh, nice to see new people in town. <laughs> what a lovely looking crew. You are. Fresh from the creeks, are you? Got a few claims for sale, Jack Manure. Lovely to meet you all. Nice to meet you, Jack. A century after the gold rush, the people here are proud of their past. But Dawson City is also a town of beginnings. Just don't get downwind of us. <laughs> <laughs> Both Andrea and Dave are starting new lives at Bombay Peggy's, the type of establishment that once welcomed many a lonely miner. Wow. Andrea is only here for one night, but she's making the best of it. In the bathtub, it's really easy to make the decision that you don't want to go on the claim when life is so good in the tub. During the gold rush, the citizens of Dawson City picked their sins. Guns were out, gambling was in. A pouch of gold dust could buy just about anything, including what the newspapers called companionship. Like many women of that time, Andrea arrived in town without much money. Tomorrow, she'll look for an 1897-style job, a respectable one. Dave Delnia also has a new life and a new look. Like most journalists of that time, Dave will not share in any gold his companions might find. Instead, he will live comfortably in town. I have been told that I can get a bath here. Is this true? You sure can. All if right, you got, like, a... Have you got a nugget? Well, not yet. I just got it. <laughs> For the others, comfort is a distant dream. Even all the grit in the bottom feels good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, oh. It's like claws more than nails. Yeah. You don't think they did this back in the day? This is first class. These pants fit when we left IE. And now they're like clown pants. <laughs> How much would a bath cost in the old days? 50 cents. Oh. 50 cents? 50 cents? Yes. Would there be any extras or extra? Shave would be 25 more. Well, Sebastian, if we can, we have friends, uh -huh. and we will try and find you a cigar. Oh, that's going to be nice. Later. <laughs> no one required cleaning oh, yeah. as badly as Sebastian. Ooh, hey. Oh, yes. Oh, oh yes. To celebrate reaching Dawson City, they're having the sort of meal weary travelers might have enjoyed in 1897. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, 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 more bread here. Oh, I'll we'll just go eat get it. some more so of the wow. pudding. I, you just stood up here and ate raspberries. I felt a little guilty having such a fancy bath, and as soon as I heard you had five ladies pouring water on you, yeah. I was like, never feel guilt again. Yep. Tomorrow, mm, yeah. they are going their separate ways. But first, they must resolve the crucial question faced by every stampeder who made it this far. If they find gold, how will it be shared? Now, if you do find some gold, mm -hmm. how will the gold be split up? And has Andrea's contribution, is that worth a share of the gold? Okay. Doesn't have to be a big share. Well, I think the best way to work that out is if we find nothing, 
Are you willing to give us some of your wages? Certainly. I already said I would. So then it's still a gamble for all of us. I mean, if we split now, why would anybody that splits now be entitled to any future earnings? That's just the way I see it. They still need, need to have a share, but not, maybe not the fifth mm -hmm. of the goal. Mm -hmm. Because they, they put all the work to come here, but there's actually the work for the goal too. Mm -hmm. that it's not. She's not willing to go out there and risk not making any money, whereas we are taking that risk. There's no guarantees we will get anything. And there's no guarantees that you would come out and, and support us if you knew we were working a dead mine. Mm -hmm. Because there'd be no evidence there that we were going to be successful. And you might run into a successful miner in the meantime. So, I mean, historically, I'm sure that happened. Yeah. Why stick with a bunch of people that are digging dirt all day? Mm -hmm. you know? so, uh... By the end of the meal, it has been decided. Andrea will get nothing. Some women did work in the gold fields. Most, however, found a more efficient way to strike it rich. They mined the miners. Martha Black, known as the first woman of the Yukon, kept a diary of her time in Dawson. There are about 4,000 men here, and 150 women. An Englishman I knew was separated from his pocketbook by one of the peroxide beauties of the North. There is many an El Dorado to be found in simple-minded men. And this is where the men, simple or otherwise, came to be separated from their gold dust. Klondike Cates, the Moulin Rouge, Yukon style. Day 73, a visitor for breakfast. Yukon miner yeah. Sam Holloway. So, what is the definition of a Yukon gold mine? I don't know. What's that? <laughs> That's a hole in the ground with a liar standing in it. <laughs> I got set on more Sam has prospected chases. for gold all his life. If he gold. found any, he's not saying. Uh, but he has arranged for yeah, the team to work a claim. Miles in Last deep, Chance Creek. Sam says rumors, it's a sure thing. I guarantee you there's gold in that little valley down that claim you're going to. But using only a rocker, you're just going to, it's going to take some luck to right. hit it. To reach the claim, Rick, Joe, and Sebastian have hired a pack train from local horse wrangler Bentley money. Schmidt. Yeah, the the He's not sure where Last Chance is, but in the Yukon, no one lacks confidence, and Bentley says he'll find it. It's funny because all the trip I didn't talk about gold, and now I started really thinking about yeah, gold, 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 gold. Sebastian's gold fever is starting to burn. He's 19, he's broke, and he hopes Last Chance Creek will put some money in his pocket. Inexperienced miners were called chichacos and they walk these trails by the thousands, convinced that treasures of gold lay just ahead. By the time they reached the gold fields, most of the valuable claims had been staked. Wise stampeders hooked up with old timers and worked for wages. Others vanished into the bush, taking advice from no one and hearing nothing but the call of the wild. 
they were looking for claims like Rabbit Creek, where it all began in August of 1896. Within weeks of this first big strike, miners found gold at Independence, gold at El Dorado, gold at Hunker, gold everywhere. Rick, Joe, and Sebastian are heading for Last Chance Creek, which lies in the heart of the gold fields. The problem is, Bentley can't find it. The trails all look the same, and in the thick bush, he has lost his way. Hours later, Sam Holloway is worried. He's driven out to the claim to help the team get settled, but they are nowhere to be found. I think I'm stuck here for a while. How long of a journey is it from town out here? They should have been here in about eight hours with that pack train. They sh three or four hours ago, they should have been up on that ridge ready to come down. And that's about a 20 minute walk. They're up on that ridge somewhere. They've gone down the wrong side. Not only have they gone down the wrong side, they've gone down the wrong valley. After months of work to get here, Sebastian's hopes of striking it rich are fading as the evening shadows grow. Danger is ever present in the Yukon. By midnight, they are exhausted and lost in the deep bush. I think today definitely ranks up there as one of the hardest days we've had. We keep thinking it's going to get easy and easier eventually. But this is my first experience at uh, prospecting and mining, so it's uh, not quite what I expected. The Yukon is an immense wilderness, which has swallowed many a southern Chichaco. Sam Holloway has chartered a helicopter to find the team. He knows that gold fever hits like the swipe of a grizzly's paw, and that's why miners, even today, disappear in the Great Alone, just as they did in 1897, Tapanagni. It is a wonder to all who see the newcomers set out across the land in their fancy hats and leather shoes. Some even dress in house clothes. Providence alone will save the Chichaco. A century later, Providence is still watching. Sam spots the team. They have been lost in the bush for 30 hours. I'm worried about you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, well, we got lost, and then we... Oh, we didn't get lost. We tried to take this trail straight down the hill, and we got stuck in the bush. We had to turn around and go sure? all the way back up. <laughs> I didn't expect walking that long. I was expecting a little five hours walk, not a 24 hours walk. We haven't eaten since yesterday morning at 7 a.m. And uh, we're hungry and tired. And we just want to get to camp so we can set up and eat. Andrea has found a job. In fact, she's found two. 
She's moved from Bombay Peggy's to a local hotel to do the sort of work a new woman in town might have done in 1897. I work at the bunkhouse here where I stay. I'm, a, I'm there every morning. I go and see if there's work. When things are tight, I don't have a lot of money. Um, I pretty much work for my food. I work at the tavern, a place called The Pit. So how do you like working here? It's better than making bannock. And you're, you're actually getting paid wages. It's a real job, right? A real job, yes. Everybody thinks I'm super amazing and skookum and tough for have completed what we did. And really, I don't, I don't see myself as super amazing. I see it as something that I did because I had to do it. For Dave Delnia, his life in Dawson City is a mixed blessing. He is comfortable and well-fed, but misses the camaraderie he felt on the trail. And the boys headed off to the claim, uh, Rick, Joe, and Sebastian. Uh, that was a little hard for me because uh, this is the first time when our roles sort of, they differ. And uh, that's, that was tough for me to, you know, up till now I've just been one of the guys. And since I've been here, the, you know, there's the sort of the, the class, the class systems are, are a little different. and. Uh, as the journalist, I would have stayed in Dawson and stayed in a bunkhouse or a hotel room and ate at restaurants and the guys would have gone off to the mines and I would have stayed here and, you know, worked on my writings and compiled my notes and, and that's exactly what I'm doing. Gold Rush journalists competed fiercely for stories and there were plenty to tell. Tapanadney. It is impossible for anyone to escape what I call the Klondike magnifier. Life here is unbelievable in the telling. But you can't tell no lies about the gold fields. At the peak of the gold rush, Dawson City was the most exciting place on the planet. Champagne for breakfast, moose for lunch, caviar for dinner. Anything could be had for a nugget of gold. The gold was found in places like this, Last Chance Creek. With Sam leading the way, the team has finally found it. Ten weeks after they began, they have reached the end of the trail. All right, this is it. This is it. Hey. So we're here, we're on the ground. Hey. Here's gonna be the church. <laughs> we're the first. So I guess last, last chance. chance. Last chance, yeah. End of the rainbow, yeah, right here. This claim has produced gold since 1898, since Robert Henderson came through and told everybody to come over this way. Do you have any idea how much? I don't know how much. Miners will never tell you exactly how much gold they're getting. But seriously though, a small creek like this could easily produce gold. Oh, for sure. There is hardly a creek anywhere in the Klondike that doesn't have a pay streak running down. Life on a mining claim hasn't changed much in a century. It is damp and it is muddy. Got to locate where the gold was being carried across it because if any gold was carried across that, it would have worked its way into that bedrock. Just dirt, eh? Yeah. Oh, and there's the fro holy permafrost right there, eh? Holy. Much of the ground in the Yukon is permanently frozen. During the gold rush, Stampeders worked through the winter building fires to melt the earth. This type of prospecting is called placer mining. The work is the same today as it was in 1897. Pick and shovel, water and pan. Rick Unruh would have fit in with those Stampeders. Like many of them, he's a family man but he endures the loneliness. The lure of gold is strong. 
the gravel is really rusty. And rusted gravels are an indication that there's mineralization. So, and you know, any areas of mineralization are a good sign that there's potential for gold there. I got this sample from as low as I could, and uh, we'll just pan her down and see if we can get any colors out of her. Water is extremely cold. Just hope to see the nice little flake or two to at least let us know we're kind of in the right spot here. If you're finding enough color over a large enough area, you might want to bring in a rocker or even build a sluice system. A color is usually a piece of gold so small you can't even pick it up with your fingers. And uh, anything that you can pick up with your fingers, I usually consider that to be a nugget. If there is any gold, it would be right up in here. You can see there's a slight layer of real fine black sand up there. Really fine black sand, but not even a color. Not even a color here, so. To find the gold, you follow the water. It shapes the land and grinds rock into gold. This is a rocker box, faster than panning. It's a box that rocks back and forth, and you can uh, take this little hopper thing here with holes in the bottom. It goes up in the top. You would put gravel in there. Now you would pour water into it and then you would rock it back and forth and all the small gravel will work through the holes and it'll drop down through and underneath inside there's a small sluice system and the lighter material should wash through and your gold and black sands will get caught down in this small little ripple system that we have in there. Some miners say there's music in their work, and it's the sweetest sound of all, like the tinkle of nuggets on a banker's scale. It is the sound of money, but only a few will ever hear it. We're finding lots of rocks. <laughs> Andrea has been invited for tea. Many of the women of Dawson City came as young brides and spent their lives on the gold fields. They have sympathy for what Andrea has been through. How long since you've had tea out of a china cup? Months. <laughs> tea out of a tin cup. <laughs> a chipped tin cup. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. That is good. Very dry spell. I just wondered what your impressions of Dawson were when you arrived here. All I could think of was the bathtub, the bathtub. There's got to be a bathtub in this <laughs> town somewhere. And you found one? I did. I found a very nice bathtub with bubbles up to my chin. And I didn't have to share the bath water with anyone. <laughs> well, that's even better. Oh, yeah. that's Tell me about your sewing machine. The sewing machine got left at the summit. The men folk had made a deal that they'd help me get to Dawson with my things. And when they got to the summit, it was, well, we'll help you get to Dawson, but if you want that, you're going to have to carry it yourself. 
that sewing machine would have been worth $10 million once you got it into Dawson City. Just I had to make some very hard choices, and yes, I left my best friend at the summit. So are men as, just as uh, macho and chauvinistic now yeah. as they used to be? I thought maybe so they had been taught done. something. Well, I totally felt like that. Interval. They were having, I would get up early and I would make them breakfast and get them up when breakfast was ready, mm -hmm. feed them, send them on their way. They wouldn't even bring their dishes to the dish bin. In 1898, <laughs> they treated women like they were something from heaven, and uh, they would have just you know, done their best for you. Uh, so uh, being a liberated woman in this day and age probably wasn't much of a help to you. They I probably had said, let her do it herself. That's exactly what that is. Yeah. This is life. Great life. Life on a placer mine. It has rained. Every day, our gold pans are full of water. It just stopped hailing out. And these are the happy miners. Um, last night, we had the river come up. Overnight, with the heavy rains, we lost a little bit of equipment, but that's no big problem. Um, so we're just going to keep plugging along here. And again, uh, the hardships we're experiencing, I just kind of look back at uh, the people that were doing this 100 years ago and thinking, this is what their lives were like day in, day out, for possibly years. After a few days on the claim, mm -hmm. how does it look? Uh, we didn't find nothing yet, maybe too little color. So it's not really exciting at the moment. Uh, we don't feel like we're going to find uh, gold. So it's just a, a life of digging holes? Yeah, digging holes through some mud in the pan, wash with water. Throw the rest in the water, some more mud in the another pan, uh, cut some firewood, uh, hang around camp when it's raining, eat a lot of bannock, and that's pretty much <laughs> the life of the, of the claims. Yeah. Back in town, Andrea isn't having much fun either. This is the hardest part now, staying in town and, and staying focused on my task, but all I do is worry about the men. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking, I hope they're okay, I hope they get gold, I hope they're eating properly, I hope they're not burning the bannock, I hope they don't waste their sugar. Dave Delnia is looking for a story. He's rented a horse and is heading to Last Chance Creek. Despite the comforts of town, Dave is lonely. After months together on the trail, he's happy to be back with his friends. Were you riding horseback? Oh, yeah. Oh, excellent. It was great. No 30-hour adventure for me. No. <laughs> Loneliness was part of frontier life. Postal service, my friend. Dawson City had mail service, but news was rare. So letters were worth their weight in gold. There's been lots of sitting around just thinking about what's been going on out here. Oh, on. Sebastian has been away from home for almost a year. He left to find his way. Now, after months of silence, a letter from his parents. So what's the news from home? Oh, just good news. It's so nice to have news from my friend and everybody's really happy of me and Everybody miss me. It's it's a strange feeling. I never thought like I left Quebec like a bomb, and now everybody know my story. And yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> I'm like shaking. I'm so excited. <laughs> For Rick, there is no mail, and this worries him. Nothing from his children. Nothing from his wife. By nature, he is a hard worker. Today works harder. Andrea has finally heard from home, a letter from her husband. She married him after knowing him just nine days. Nine years later, she's not sure if she's going back. Good news, he's got a job. Good news, he's got another job. 
dog wags his tail. Future looks great. After 10 days at last chance, they have found nothing. Rick has panned endlessly, driving himself hard to cover the pain of missing his family. All he has found is frustration and heartache. Just my little guys. Sixth birthday. Two days ago. And I wasn't there. In eighteen ninety seven. Tap and Adney saw the same thing. Sadness and anger everywhere. Many are stopping, throwing up their hands in disgust. They go around the creeks cursing and swearing at those who brought them. Some say the Klondike is nothing but a moose pasture. Joe Bishop is at home in the Yukon mud. He grew up in Detroit, but moved north to find some peace. Whether he finds gold or not, Joe is happy just to be here. Okay, let's start a new song. It's raining. Again. Oh, yeah, again. We've had our adventures. We had a bear come and tear through camp, uh, creating a little bit of havoc and eating a little bit of food, but uh, we scared her off. And, and uh, a couple shots from the shotgun, and I don't think we'll be seeing much more of that bear anymore. We gave it a, a good scare. Um, well, Rick did. See, there's our problem right there. Damn, I missed him. But hopefully he'll know better than to come back here again. In the late afternoon of their 85th day, their hard work pays off. Joe finds gold. There's gold in these creeks. No way. Yeah. Oh, good score, Jojo. The nugget is only worth a few dollars, but the achievement is priceless. Come on, right, boys. So you got your big nugget now. Yeah, no. Time for everybody to get their big nugget. The team can now stand beside the gold rush ghosts of Swiftwater Bill and Skookum Jim as men who have pulled gold with their own hands from the earth. In Dawson City, Andrea Bellon is about to strike her own vein of gold. Well, the, the tavern where she works sometimes pays its staff in nuggets. Today is payday. And, uh, I'm sure you'll find this wow. token sufficient to uh, represent the wonderful work you've done here at the Westminster Hotel. Oh, thank you. There's something for you all. <laughs> Yukon gold, 50 times more valuable than the nugget found by the men. With her newfound wealth, Andrea has rented a wagon and decided to come calling. She is lonely, and despite the tensions on the trail, she misses the men. In 1897, it was not unusual for women to bring food or gifts to the claims. Martha Black, 
one of the first women to live in Dawson City, was a regular visitor. On those glorious Indian summer days, I went to the diggings and met all sorts of men. People said I should take a revolver, but I had no fear of anything, especially if I had a stout stick. Clocks and schedules are irrelevant. You go by how long it takes to get the job done without wrecking the man or the team, and you, you just deal with life. Martha Black would have liked Andrea. Life in both centuries has not been easy for her. But as the long summer nears its end, she makes two decisions. She will return to her husband. She will also share her gold with the men. Why? Because she learned bridges are better built than burned. It's been horrible. It's been wonderful. I hate them. I love them. I can never make up my mind, just like in real life. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, here. Oh, do you want a seat? I ate half it on the way out here. Oh, 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 I brought you chocolate, too. And, 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 not only that. Wow. A pie. Oh, and yeah. check it out. I didn't wash my plate just for you guys. <laughs> it looks like one of ours. In 1897, 100,000 Southerners left their homes for the Klondike. Only 30,000 reached Dawson City. Of those, less than half staked a claim, and only a few hundred got rich. The Stampeders returned from the Klondike as men returned from war, battered and bruised, yet wise beyond their years. And like this team, they came home joyous to have survived the incredible journey and full of stories and songs. <laughs> ordinary people lived in a time when adventure sprang from the hearts of the least expected. At the end of the Great Klondike Trail, like most Stampeders, they found pride of achievement and warmth in fellowship. A century later, these riches still shine like a glacier at sunrise or a virgin nugget washed clean in a gold miner's pan. I got a nugget right, or a small, we call that a flake, right there. So it keeps me going. You know, they left with such big dreams and, you know, this huge adventure. They were going to come up here and they were going to hit the mother load and, and everybody was going to be rich. And then to get here, and there's nothing, you know, it's, there's nothing there. I read this book about Klondike women, and one of the women said it was no big deal. But when you're doing it and you're just in survival mode, it's just survival mode. You just do what you have to do to get by. This is the challenge. And once you step foot on that trail, uh, you know, you're in it for the long haul. I learned that it was a pretty simple and fun life back then. So you had some fun. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, a lot of fun, a lot of hard time, but fun time. Dawson Bound, Dawson Bound. Everybody knows I'm Dawson Bound. Looking for gold has never been found. Everybody knows I'm Dawson bound. Wind and rain, wind and rain. Won't send me back to where I came. I ain't ever gonna turn around. Everybody knows I'm Dawson bound. I'm Dawson Bell. Everybody knows 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 I'm Dawson Bell. Everybody
Everybody knows I'm Dawson Bell. Everybody knows I'm Dawson Bell.